All right. Um, so what I'd like to do uh, is take a quick look at um, as com some comparisons. I'm trying to get this pulled up. It's just not want to work for me. All right, so uh, back in, well, a month ago, um, we were um, uh, selling and buying um, some some different companies. And so I want to take a look at kind of where we are now and, and where we've been. So um, the first thing I want to look at, though, since I, just, I have it pulled up here, is Rogers Communications, uh, only because uh, that is the most worrisome uh, position that we currently have um, and so the question was Rogers or Verizon all right um, just to go back and take a look at this I think I'm gonna have to leave this um, so small that way though all right so um, let's go table All right, so communication services. Um, so this is the, the, the sector, um, and we see uh, Verizon and uh, Rogers Communications uh, are tied for MVP, most valuable uh, um, player, um, okay? Uh, what this says is that uh, these companies were on the best performing portfolio four out of the last 12 months, all right? Um, we see that Rogers has uh, a much better uh, average uh, than Verizon, uh, return average. Um, TLK uh, has the largest return, um, but for whatever reason, hasn't been on uh, any of the best performing uh, portfolios. Uh, let's take a quick look at what that portfolio looks like. So uh, what we're looking at is, um, this is as of yeah 2018 and this is so this is the return since 2018 and this is the portfolio uh that made that return okay so since 2018 this portfolio has returned uh 46 percent this particular portfolio the one that we're following has returned uh 45 percent the next one is the rolling 12 months all right so for the last 12 months uh, the return alpha portfolio, which the portfolio that they were following, uh, has returned uh, 56%. All right, so that's the return that we're following. And let's take a quick, that's the, the, the portfolio, I'm sorry, that, that we're following. And let's take a quick look at what's in that portfolio. So Best Buy, um, Royal Financial, the Canadian Bank, uh, Valero, Fastenal, uh, GLW, don't know, a, a lot about uh, Southern Copper, we're in that one, Merck, we're in that one, uh, RTX, I forget who they are, uh, Rogers is there, and uh, VIP, and then WP Carry. Um, I did uh, talk a little bit about VIP uh, in our February video, and we decided to go with Excel Energy instead, and we're just going to look at uh, the comparison between, um, you know, what's here versus, you know, what we got into, right? So, um, We've already taken a look at the, not gonna let me go back to it. And it does this whenever, whenever I'm using screen share, it's weird. All right, um, so uh, this is just comparison, like I say, between Verizon and Rogers Communications. Um, Verizon is down here in, in the light blue. Uh, Rogers is, is up here in the, the dark blue. And as you can see, uh, this is, I believe, uh, a one year uh, chart. Uh, Rogers has done um, much better uh, than Verizon. Uh, if we bring this down to the last three months, uh, we see uh, that uh, Verizon has done just a little bit better. So more recently, uh, Verizon has done just a little bit better than Rogers, but not much. If we look at one month, then we see that Verizon has done much better. So long term, uh, it appears that um, it appears that Rogers uh, has outperformed um, Verizon. Um, 
but right now it looks like Verizon's doing better than than Rogers. So it's something that we'll just have to keep a, an, an eye on. Like I said, right now we are not down far enough uh, to purchase more um, Rogers um, uh, stocks shares. Um, and we're definitely not up enough to, to sell. So um, we're just going to have to keep an eye on it and, um, and see where this goes. Definitely keep an eye on, on Verizon. Let's take a look at TLK2 uh, just because we talked about it. Uh, purple. All right. Uh, last five days, I mean, it's, it's killed both of them. Let's pull this out um, for a year, see where we are. Yeah, still over a year, killed both of them. Um, that wasn't necessarily the case, looks like, back in no November, October uh, 2020, uh, which I think has a lot to do with, with, with COVID, honestly. Um, but um, as far as stock performance, though, uh, TLK, now, now, you know, when we pull it out even further, uh, we see that TLK is actually uh, worse performing. And so I think that that says a little bit about um, a TLK and, 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 and what's going on with it. Um, let's take a quick look at what the numbers are, because I am curious. Uh, let's see. Let's go here. Uh, I actually need a, a better... sheet for this, but that's okay. It's not going to let me do it. Oh, yep, there we go. All right. Okay. Oh, let's see what's going to be doing. All right. Horizon. And Rogers. All right, so um, let me lock this in place. Wow. It's only freezing the first one. Let's try it again. All right, now let's go. All right, that's better. Okay. Uh, so we see Verizon. No, actually TLK. Uh, TLK has the better uh, dividend. Uh, Rogers has the better return. Rogers has the better alpha, TLK the better beta, and that's exactly why we're in um, Rogers, because of the alpha, you know, um, the, the return, the alpha, you know, that's what's really uh, been performing well as far as portfolios go. And so that's the reason why we are betting on Rogers. Um, if it was beta, maybe uh, TLK uh, would be a better deal, but um, you know we have to go with the numbers. And so let's let's take a quick look uh, since we're talking about it at what that looks like. Uh, so this is the heat chart. Um, 
I've showed this many, many, many times before. Uh, dark green is going to be uh, the better performing. Of course, the dark red is going to be the worst performing. Okay, so uh, this is April 2021. We see that the alpha portfolio uh, has performed uh, the best, uh, uh, returning 11% in one month, um, whereas it looks like the dividend portfolio uh, performed the worst. And so um, what we're looking at is just, you know, eyeball color. We're looking for a lot of green, you know. So we, we see here there's a lot of yellow and some reds. Um, and so when we look at... See, this one is kind of kind of bland. It's got some greens in there, not a lot. This one has some greens, uh, not a whole lot. This one's really orange. Um, it's really interesting to see. You got this one month here where everything made money, right? Everything. Um, and so this is our return alpha. Um, as you can see, it is uh, lots of green, really, you know, not very many yellows. Most of it is green. We do have this, this one month here, um, which was last month, that just was, was not great. Um, but um, overall, though, uh, looks like a really, really good color here. Um, and then some of these are, are really similar. You can tell some are worse than others. Um, but not bad. And then these are just, you can tell they're just completely worse. So that's what we're doing. We're going with the, the return. We're going with the alpha. Um, alpha is how well the stock performs. Um, when the stock market itself is performing well. So if the stock market is returning 1%, uh, uh, alpha, I mean, a stock with a high alpha will return, you know, 2% or 3% or whatever, right? Um, and then the return is, is literally what it sounds like, right? It just takes a 12-month average um, and whatever that monthly average return is. Uh, that's what gives you the uh, the score for the return and so that's the portfolio that that we're following uh, you can see here that the the pure alpha portfolio has these these really dark greens right but right here let I me mean, see when it's down it's down right and so that's what really helps the return alpha portfolio is because you have those those companies there uh, that do have a high alpha but they have a high average monthly return. So they, they tend to perform a, a bit better and they're a bit more stable as far as uh, price action goes. All right. Um, I think we've whipped that horse enough. Uh, let's take a look now at, um, okay, yeah, Bank of America and Blackstone. Let's get rid of these. Now, Blackstone was the the company that we were in, and we sold uh, that one for Bank of America. And so, um, this is a two-year chart. Blackstone, way, way, way better than Bank of America. Let's pull out. Let's look at uh, one year. When we look at one year, Bank of America uh, beats Blackstone. It looks like they kind of go back and forth with each other, um, one over the other. Let's look at the most recent uh, chart, which is three months. We see that Bank of America has, has more than outperformed uh, Blackstone. And if we come to, to the most, most recent, we see that uh, Blackstone just outperformed Bank of America over the last month. Um, so, yeah, and then if we look five days, uh, Bank of America's done much better. So overall, uh, Bank of America has performed uh, much better um, than, than Blackstone if, you, if we, you know, take out last month, right? And even then, it wasn't a, a huge difference, uh, maybe a 3% difference. Um, so I think we can be happy with that. Um, the actual uh, company, though, that's part of that return alpha 
portfolio uh, is Royal or Regions Financial. I say Royal. I know Royal is a Canadian bank. Um, so Regions Financial uh, is what the program called for. And as you can see down here in the purple, um, uh, these other guys have, have, have way outperformed it uh, over the last month. If we look three months, um, looks like yeah, it's it's just yeah, yes, yeah, it's been outperforming. Let's look um a year. Yeah, I mean double. So let's take a quick look now uh at RF and uh wrong one. There we go. And let's see what that looks like. And so what's really cool about um, about the options game is that we don't get into um, any positions uh, that we don't want to be in. Because like I said, the program calls for Bank of America, but we don't actually own Bank of America. All we've been doing is, is selling options against um, Bank of America to purchase it. So uh, it's very easy for us to then turn and say, oh, okay, well, maybe RF is a better deal. Let's, let's go there. So let's take a quick look here uh, at what we have. Uh, looks like uh, the monthly return is uh, better for Bank of America. But as you can see here, uh, the score is negative uh, 100. Why is it negative 100? Well, uh, there is something that is going on with Bank of America that causes the program to say, you know what, you can't invest in this. And I'm going to bet you that it has to do with the dividend. So I'm going to take a quick look at that dividend and see where it is. Um, but yeah, right away, we can see that not only is the average return better, uh, but the alpha is also better, too, for Bank of America. Um, so let's take a quick look at what the dividend is and i think that'll answer our question for us can't be 100 percent sure about this but there's some reason why the program is saying that we can't invest it's not price it's not that they haven't paid a dividend so Question is, what is it? Uh, see if I'll get it on the summary page. All right, so yeah, there it is. And so what's happened here is that um, when we uh, went and put all these stocks in our basket of stocks to invest in, um, the price was um, on Bank of America was probably about $32, uh, which made the dividend, you know, uh, over 2%. Because the stock price has increased and the dividend has not increased, the dividend is now less than 2%. In anything less than 2%, we can't invest in. So that's what's happened here, okay? Um, and that is the reason why uh, we have this change um, in the in the software from Bank of America uh, to um, Regents Financial. And so this is something that I'm going to seriously um, consider. Um, we currently have, like I said, an option against Bank of America uh, until the 1st of May. Um, so when 1st of May comes around, I'll take a look at this um, uh, Regions Financial uh, and decide whether or not uh, we'll, we'll purchase um, shares of Regions Financial. Um, you know, the stock price is 21 bucks, um, which means that... Um, 
we can purchase even more shares, um, you know, and maybe instead of um, selling two options, maybe we can sell four options. Um, so uh, that'll be just that much more money in our pocket. All right, uh, let's take a look at the next one. This is a fun one, Best Buy versus Royal Caribbean. Uh, Royal Caribbean, um, I've talked about before, of being uh, really just, I think, people searching for uh, stocks that have been really beat up um, and wanting to um, make money on the fact that these companies uh, were in just a horrible, horrible position um, when COVID hit. Because Royal Caribbean, I think, is maybe um, starting to um, to take trips. I don't I don't know if they if they've booked any uh, cruises yet. I'm curious. Let's see. Royal Caribbean. And cruise. 2021 looks like Royal Caribbean does have cruises in 2021 uh, we've decided to extend the suspension of sailings for our global fleet through May 31st 2021 excluding sailings on board uh, quantum so they do have some cruises going out, it appears, um, but they've suspended the rest uh, through May 31, 2021. So, you know, <laughs> and, we, and we're looking at the price right now. It's up 4% today. How, how can a company that isn't making any money uh, on cruises uh, continue to, to do so well uh, as far as uh, the price goes? I don't know, but um, you can see here, I mean, that's exactly what's going on. So let's take a look at Best Buy, uh, which is the position that we currently have. All right. Um, all right, let's look, let's take a year, take a year look first. Um, see Royal Caribbean, uh, stock prices doubled double the performance of Best Buy. Let's go a little bit further out. And Best Buy overtakes uh, Royal Caribbean by quite a bit. I mean, quite a bit. And, uh, and a lot of that honestly has to do with this COVID drop uh, that we see here in March. And, and this is what I think uh, uh, investors are taking advantage of. You know, when, when COVID happens, everyone knows, you know, hey, <laughs> There's no more cruises, right? And so you have this huge drop uh, in, in stock price, and then someone says, "Wait a minute, that thing is falling too far. Let's we can we can buy this thing because it's still a great company that owns um, a lot of these ships. They still have people that will want to go on cruises, and at some point uh, they will cruise again, right? And so uh, it's just been a, a steady rise uh, from that uh, low point." There in March. So let's look um, most recently. Let's look at three months, and we see that yeah, Royal Caribbean again outperformed Best Buy uh, by quite a bit. Let's go more recent. Um, is uh, Best Buy is outperformed, and the reason why this is important is because we purchased uh, this position uh, about a month ago. Uh, well, exactly a month ago, uh, based on YouTube video. Um, and so over the last month, Best Buy has performed uh, much better uh, than, than Royal Caribbean. Um, but with that being said, um, it is definitely something uh, to keep an eye on uh, because we do know that Royal Caribbean, you know, they, they definitely will uh, sail again. There's no question about that. Um, and I am curious. Um, So our program calls for Best Buy. 
Um, and so, you know, we're going to default to that, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye on Royal Caribbean um, because uh, I think there may be um, some potential there. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. All right, Campbell Soup and Colgate Palm Olive. Uh, I am really interested in this one. Um, we're currently in Campbell Soup, and I remember in that video, um, really going back and forth over um, which company um, I thought was the better the better buy. And so I'm really interested to see what happens here. I mean, Colgate Palm Olive, you know, they're 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 selling cleaning supplies, and with with COVID, um, you have to imagine cleaning supplies are, are going to be kind of a big deal. So over the last month, when we purchased this thing, um, Campbell's Soup has actually outperformed uh, Colgate Palm Olive, which says a lot because Campbell's Soup has not been one of our, you know best performing uh, positions. Uh, if we step out uh, a year, we see that Colgate has actually outperformed uh, Campbell Soup. And if we take this out a bit further, um, then we have Campbell Soup on top of, of Colgate. So I think we made the right decision, um, specifically, you know, over the last month. Uh, long term, it, it even looks like uh, Campbell Soup um, is actually uh, the better uh, performer. Um, I am curious just again to see confirm, uh, RTX um, is what the program calls for. So let's take a quick look at RTX. Um, honestly, I don't know a lot about the company. Uh, Raytheon, it's a defensive uh, company, uh, sells lots of electronics and things for military. Uh, applications um, and other electronic goods um, but yeah I mean it's being definitely outperformed uh, by the other uh, companies here let's take a quick look at the numbers Okay, so Campbell Soup definitely has the highest score, so I'm not sure why the program is calling for RTX. Um, Campbell Soup has the better dividend. Ah, that's what it is. That that average return. Um, Look, a steep drop. Oh, my goodness, a steep, steep drop. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, that's something that I'm going to have to definitely keep an eye on. Um, like I said, we can't we can't buy more. We can't sell out um, at the moment. Um, but, um, oh, wait, it's not even the right score. Let me do this. Uh, let's see if I might be able to spell this right. Uh, is that it? Yeah, there we go. Cool. All right. Let's see how fast I can do this, if at all. Surprised I spelled it correctly. All right. Uh, 
beta return. That's not it. That's not it either. No, it didn't work. Okay, well, uh, really need. I really need a different uh, different sheet to do this with. And I didn't have it queued up before I started the video. Okay, here we go. Return alpha. Okay. It's usually not the sheet that I use um, to look at these numbers. So it's taking me a bit longer to, to get to it. Here we go. All right, CCL. And I don't even know if this is gonna give me the score. I am really curious to see what's going on. All right. Let's see. And yeah, it's not letting me go back. All right. So, yeah, the return. And the alpha. The MF, uh, ME. Yeah. This is not going to work for me. Okay. Well, um, Um, and I go through here. So weird. Okay. Now. There we go. All right, perfect. So now we can see, uh, yes, the score um, is definitely definitely higher so there had to be just a huge uh drop off in that monthly average over the last couple months uh in order for this to flip so again um we're gonna have to just keep an eye on on rtx and definitely uh look to get out of um campbell soup it's just that simple all right let's move on to the next one uh pfizer and merck uh, this is interesting. I think um, Pfizer, I think they finally conceded uh, the COVID vaccine stuff. Uh, they were in it for quite some time. And I know Merck pulled out um, before Pfizer did. Uh, so Pfizer may still be there. But Pfizer was a legacy position for us. Um, it's a company that we started out with uh, back in 2015. And so, I mean, we were just hanging on to it forever and the price never moved. Um, I think we had one opportunity um, a couple years ago 
to get out and uh and we missed that opportunity and so we just languished in that position forever um so right away we see that uh Merck is outperformed um long term two years kind of looking for a year um it's like Pfizer and then more recently uh Merck so uh but barely though uh barely barely less than a percent uh if we look at three months looks like Pfizer uh actually uh performed much better uh than Merck uh so uh you know right now Merck is doing better um I'm really glad that they, they were out of Pfizer and, and into something different um but we'll keep our, our eye on it and just kind of see where it goes uh so far nothing spectacular is happening uh no new breakthroughs or anything like that I think everything right now is really surrounding uh COVID and, and where that's going uh Johnson & Johnson um I forget the other uh Moderna um and I think there's one more um uh that are that are uh that actually have uh medicines that's that's out on the market right now but um either, either way um uh Merck has uh, talked quite a bit in their earnings call uh so did Pfizer about uh you know getting hospitals and doctors offices to open back up to prescribe more medicines and so on and so forth I think we are past that now though I think most doctors offices have, have opened up and so these guys don't have any more excuses uh for not performing well and not making uh, those profits. So be really interested to listen to the next earnings call because the next earnings call, I don't think they're going to have that excuse. And if they use that excuse, we know that they're not being uh, straight up with us. All right, uh, let's take a look. Um, the next one, I was really hoping I'd be able to just click forward. Uh, let's see. All right, Brookfield Excel Energy. And Brookfield um, has lots of um, lots of power generation uh, in South America, whereas Excel Energy uh, is US based. And so that does uh, typically um, have it's a factor um, in the companies that uh, we invest in uh, simply because it's much easier uh, to judge what something is doing in uh, the current uh, country that we're in versus what's going on elsewhere. Uh, sometimes you don't have a choice, right? Companies are global. Uh, but in this case, we're dealing with uh, utilities. Uh, Brookfield is interesting, though, uh, because they do provide power generation to server farms uh, and things of that nature. Um, so uh, that can be fairly lucrative, uh, I imagine. And I think there may be just a different um, rating um, structure or 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 the way that prices are 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 done in in different countries in the US everything is government regulated and you have to actually ask permission uh to increase your prices so i'm not quite sure uh, what the regulation is like elsewhere and what that does for them uh financially uh but as you can see uh this is just over the past month uh brookfield just barely uh beat out uh, Excel energy if we pull this back uh, over the last year, uh, Brookfield just more than more than uh, outperforms Excel Energy. And if we look out even further, um, Brookfield again um, just way outperforms Excel Energy. So, I mean, at this point, you know, um, I'll have to say that Brookfield Energy definitely. Um, what is this? I thought I'd. Okay, well. Now, over the last month, Excel Energy uh, beat out um, uh, Brookfield. Uh, but I, I think uh, what this says, though, is that Brookfield uh, long term uh, has outperformed Excel Energy. Um, currently, uh, Excel Energy is, is outperforming um, Brookfield. We're definitely not going anywhere right away. Uh, right now, we're up just a bit in Excel Energy, uh, not enough to, to sell. 
but I, I will definitely keep my eye on, on Brookfield and uh, continue to do more research um, because that may be our next uh, position. All right. Uh, let's look at uh, Dear Rogers, Southern Copper, and EMN. You know, I can't imagine, I can't imagine Eastman uh, beating out Southern Copper, but who knows what might happen. So let's take a look here. Uh, Eastman is a chemical company, uh, as I'm sure you saw there. Um, and Southern Copper is copper. So let's see. So this is the one month chart. There we go. I wonder if that, uh, that's what's going on. My scroll bar. Okay, there we go. All right. So these, <laughs> come on. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so Eastman, uh, looks like, uh, outperformed, um, uh, Southern Copper over the last month. Let's pull this out. Uh, Southern Copper, uh, beats out Eastman over the last year and two years Southern Copper. So long term, uh, Southern Copper beats out Eastman. And as of right now, today, over the last month, um, Eastman um, has done better uh, than, than Southern Copper, which is really saying something because Southern Copper is one of our best performing uh, positions right now. And so uh, to beat out Southern Copper is saying a lot. So did we make the right decision? Eh, short term, uh, no. Uh, long term. Maybe so. Um, so again, we'll keep an eye on it um, and just uh, make sure that we kind of know where we are and where we're going. Uh, we do have a sales signal on Southern Copper. Um, so uh, this is something that uh, we'll have to really take uh, a close look at because, I mean, we can sell uh, for, uh, you know, almost 15% gain and then purchase something else. So, um, We'll definitely uh, look close at, uh, at at Eastman as a potential um, as a potential um, position. All right, uh, that is that is it. That is it. So um, for the most part, I, I think we did uh, pretty good. Um, Eastman, um, we were losers there. Um, uh, Brookfield Infrastructure. I think that was a draw, right? Um, Royal Caribbean, I think that was a draw as well. Um, Best Buy um, is actually um, doing better now, um, but long term, um, you know, who knows? We'll, we'll see. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's it for April 2021. See you next time.